All right, boys, we made it happen. Huge, 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 huge thanks to Jeff and Bibbins. They were able to let me take the links out for a demo ride. Super excited about that. Obviously not the best conditions, not on like a real trail, but getting a feel for the skid. There's obviously a lot of similarities between the G4 and this sled. Um, so some, some carryover, but a totally different experience. Like... <laughs> This thing is rowdy. The way this sled transfers weight feels like a really transfer happy assault. So some cool things about the Lynx. First things first, you have the PPS3 skid. So this is, if you actually look at it out of the sled, it almost looks like Polaris's Pro XC rear end. It has a, a shock that goes up through the top. It's a coilover shock instead of a torsion spring. And it actually connects up in here. And then you have an uncoupled rear end, which is giving it that really lively feel. Um, from there, you have obviously very different bodywork. On the G4, there's part of a seat that goes here, and then there's cowling that goes on here. This is all exposed. You have some different panels. These do feel a decent bit wider. Um, on a G4, you would kind of have a cutaway here, and then you could kind of tuck your knee there. Um, it kind of does force your legs farther apart, but it's still not terrible. It's just different. Um, obviously, I'm not riding it with like bibs or like a mono suit on, so this feels like a lot with just pants, but you know, not terrible. <laughs> I tell you, all I can really think is how rowdy the sled is. It's awesome. You kind of combine the rowdiness of the clutching and the engagement and everything on the G4, and you put it into like an assault type skid. And this almost seems to transfer weight even more easily than the assault. It seems to be hooking up really good. This is like a an icy type base, so it's kind of to be expected. But uh, yeah, it's the only thing I don't like is there's enough lug to bite but it does kind of start to slide out so that kind of takes a little bit of getting used to looks are very subjective i know that a lot of people won't care about this but a little bit different you know the links have always been kind of a girthier sled like you have this kind of big vent up on top in person it looks pretty good the 850 E-Tech Power feels awesome on this sled. Um, absolutely as powerful as the G4, hooks up great. It has these KYB Pro 46 HLCR shocks. So you have compression, you have rebound, you have a 46 millimeter shock body, which is still technically not as big as the two inch shock on the Polaris Assault, but it's gonna be bigger than the Pro 36s that come on the XRS. Definitely a decent shock. I did notice the adjust adjustment knobs are quite a bit smaller on these. Uh, I think you could still get a glove on them fine, no big deal there. Uh, same with this one. Uh, the Kashima coating is wicked, uh, looks super premium. 
These footholds, I did notice them. Um, nothing really bad about them though. I, I kind of like them. Being able to have your foot straight forward does feel very natural. Uh, and then these side pieces, I like that coming from other brands where you can't just pop your foot out the side of the sled. So it's kind of nice to have that extra little bit of um, security with your boot. <laughs> find yourself putting your feet right up in the footholds. I don't know if that's because it's now more conducive because your, your feet are kind of flat, whereas before they're angled, I've just, every time my feet are right in them. So good design on that. Up here, we do have a recoil, very rare on a Skidoo product or BRP product, I guess you would say. Switch gear is pretty much identical to the G4. The biggest difference are these grips. They feel really good. Uh, they're not like you don't feel them kind of cutting into your hand at all, just a really smooth grip. They kind of have this really soft section here. That's pretty decent too. You have a hard riser, so you don't have that FAR riser that comes on uh, most of the spring order G4s. Stand up ergonomics feel pretty much just like I have my G4 set up. Um, when you combine an uncoupled skid like this with Skidoo's clutching, it definitely is very happy to lift the skis. So that's kind of a funny little thing. Lynx brackets are obviously standard. It's the 3500, so this is a 137 inch sled with a inch and a half ice ripper track. Like I said, hooks up pretty good. Um, in these conditions, those little ice rippers are getting great bite. Maybe a little bit more lug to kind of keep the sled straight once it starts to you know, lift off the ground. I kind of feel the back end washing out a little, but again, this is like really spring conditions. It only comes with the 7.2 display, so I know that'll be a bit of a drawback for some people, but you know, for me, not too big of a deal. These panels are definitely very interesting. You have these kind of rubber straps that are up underneath, and then you kind of have what the G4 has now in these actual like clips. So a little bit of a combination of both. They pop out down there like that instead of towards the front like on the G4. Come out really easily. I don't see them being the type of panel that can kind of stay on as you uh, take them off, but you know, still does the job pretty decent. Everything underneath, you know, looks very G4. Nothing too different there. You do have the same engine, the 850 E-Tech. You can see the much deeper keel. Like I said, no outer keel. Kind of like I said with the Pro Climb skis on the uh, Riot, kind of what I was looking for, a bit of a deeper keel. <laughs> I can definitely see these skis being very good for high speed turning, but at low speeds, they're kind of like turning a CNA. They're, they're definitely heavier. But again, this is not ideal conditions. This is like freaking icy, slushy crap, so.
back there you get a full shot of that um, coil over shock in the top. It does have an idler wheel on top. You kind of need something to make sure that the track's not going to hit that top shock. Purple limiter strap just for a little extra flare. Everything else underneath pretty similar overall. You got the different idler wheels but you know nothing too major there. It is running the RAS X front suspension so you could still adjust the um, spindles to have a wider or a more narrow ski stance. You know whatever you're feeling. And then you do get a little bug deflector windshield. I know guys hate the just trim piece that comes on these most of the time when it's a G4, so now you can say you have a windshield. The seating position feels a little different, but overall pretty similar. Um, I don't feel too crazy of a difference. The seat's definitely stiffer um, and doesn't have quite as intense of an angle, but overall not too different than the G4. Uh, you can tell how much thinner it is through here, so whereas you can't really get your legs around the side panels, you can kind of get your knee in farther in here. Um, and then kind of almost have like a different variation on being able to lean on the sled. Comes with the e-start standard, so kind of similar to the G4 in that way. But like I said, you have the recoil also, so that's a cool little feature. Um, definitely a very rowdy sled. I like it a lot. Kind of takes the G4 to a more intense level. Feels very compliant though. Like the suspension doesn't feel too crazy stiff. It, you know, you can still get it to rock back, no problem. It's not like riding like a snowcross sled or something like that. Um, I've kind of seen that a lot online. People saying this is just a very stiff sled. From the little bit of, you know, chatter I've seen and the little bumps I've seen, seems pretty compliant, seems to be able to, you know, handle it no problem, and I'm sure it's not fully stiff. I don't really have control over where it is, but, uh, yeah, it seems to do everything very well. So I would say handling characteristics, definitely an aggressive XRS. Um, you know, if that could exist, I know the XRS is already supposed to be that, but you got aggressive bite from the skis. You have the aggressive clutching. That's always an 850 E-Tex in my opinion. You have that aggressive transfer. But even like just doing that, you can feel the, the front shocks giving and all I'm doing is like a little pop-up wheelie. So, you know. You can't ask for a ton more than that. I mean, it's obviously not in a whole huge moguled out field or anything, but it gets the job done. I like it. Like I said, looks are subjective, so that's kind of going to be to each person's personal preference, but it feels like a very aggressive XRS, and I'd be curious to see if we kind of see this start making its way into the market, because obviously this sled could almost bridge the gap between the backcountry and the Renegade, which I think is kind of an ignored market. Whatever you make of it, this can kind of do a little bit of everything, you know? A really playful sled, awesome power from the 850 E-Tech. It's cool. Who would have ever thought we'd have a Lynx sled here?